I joined the Army uh, primarily for that reason, was to join the SAS eventually. I didn't really know how I was going to do it. Um, and also as a means of leaving New Zealand because I couldn't afford to save up enough money and, and leave. So I was lucky enough when I joined that after uh, finishing my all my basic and, and core training and spending a little bit of time in infantry battalion, I, uh, I got a two-year posting to Singapore. We had a base over there at the time. So I really didn't do anything to help my SAS progression from there because I was getting paid a ton of money and I was just drinking and having a good time like uh, squaddies do. And, you know, it wasn't until my two years was coming up, I was going, well, what am I going to do? I might as well get serious about doing a selection. So I came back to New Zealand and um, I did the selection and I passed. And I was lucky enough that the uh, cycle that I was going to attend was going to happen straight after the selection. So I went back, packed my bags in the battalion. And if I hadn't passed, I was going to get out of the military. And then I went up and I um, up to Papakura where the camp was and I started my cycle. Were you drinking heavily? As a young kid, also, I was drinking as we were drunken. Yeah, well, yeah, well, yes. <clears throat> you know, we one of the good things about the English and and everything like that is when they came around and they conquered all these countries, they taught us how to drink, and it wasn't good drinking; it was binge drinking. You know, so we were, um, you know, Australia, Canada, in any of these Commonwealth countries. You know, when we we don't hit it all the time, but when we do, we hit it hard. And in the military, you know, it's it's you're, com you're a big camaraderie, you're a big team, and you you celebrate everything. You know. And, and alcohol is a lot cheaper. So, of course, you know, we have a saying, you go ugly early. And uh, we used to do that. Yeah. What sort of training were you doing in the army? Was it, see, the basic training, was it difficult or was it just a free-for-all? No, we we're very disciplined. Our basic training was fantastic. I mean, I've, I've probably never been as fit in my life uh, after my basic training. We were running around, like all military um, training areas is the most inhospitable, horrible land you can think of. It's winter, summer, spring and autumn all in one day. Um, you know, our equipment was terrible, but we didn't know any better back then, so we just made it work. Um, we were fit. We had terrible food. You know, we shivered and we froze and, and we were hot. And um, But you just got on You just got on with it. You just got on and did it. And uh, it was it was fun. It was great. What age did you join SAS selection? 22. What was the training like at that at the start? Did you know what you were getting yourself involved with? Not at all. No, no, no <clears> not at all. In fact, you, you sort of take it one step at a time. You do the selection, and then from the selection, you're you're doing to your uh, your cycle. So each new each new subject is um, is all new. You have no idea really what's involved in it. Your your basic infantry training helps a lot for sure. I mean, because it's it's infantry kind of work to a degree, but each subject is so in depth that it takes months to learn that one particular subject, and not even at a good standard. You learn the basics, and you don't really apply. You don't really become very good at it until you've applied it over different missions or different years. You know. How long did it take to pass? So we have a different system from the UK. Our um, our cycle is we do a pre-selection and then we do a two-week uh, selection course. So that means your you do lots of land navigation, and that's just to weed out the people. You'll get 100 people maybe want to do a selection, and you know that the pass rate's probably going to be, you know, 3%, you know, maybe even less, you know, sometimes more. And you do a lot of land navigation, and the, and the way that you weed them out is that you're given a meal, and then you're told to go to checkpoint B, all right? So you go from A to B, you've got a certain amount of time to be there. If you don't make it in that time that's been allotted, you owe time to get to C. So if you don't make it to C in time, checkpoint C, the time that you've missed adds up. Now you can do all the checkpoints, but you may add, you may owe half an hour or an hour because you've lagged behind, you haven't kept the pace up. So you're basically running from one point to another in order to make it on time. It's not just a matter of being able to make it on time, you've got to make it at a certain time. And you won't get, you won't get another meal basically until you've made up the time. So that could possibly be the, the only meal you get during that whole cycle of that whole phase. Then you do um, other options or other other um, things like uh, 24, 12 to 24 hours in the sand dunes carrying jerry cans of water and then you uh, having to do navigation and 12 to 24 hours in swamps carrying uh, jerry cans of water. You walk 60 k's um, and you've got a certain amount of time to do it. Uh, there's you know swimming tests, there's initiative tests, there's teamwork tests and it's all that all takes about two weeks and then... They say, okay, you know, you've passed or you've failed. 
and then you're very happy. You think, you know, selection is the hardest thing you can do. It's not until you're actually in the SAS you find selection is probably one of the easiest things you you can ever do to get in there. And then you do your cycle, and that takes from anywhere from nine months to a year to do. What's the cycle? So the cycle is now all the different uh, subjects that you will need to learn in order to fit into a um, one of the squadrons. Back in my day, we had three squadrons. We had we had uh, sorry two squadrons, we, but we had black roll and green roll. So we had an A squadron and a B squadron because there wasn't very many of us. Uh, you did one year green roll, which meant that you spent your time in the jungle, in the bush, uh, doing your typical infantry uh, close protection. Uh, sorry, um, close reconnaissance training, and then you did one year in the black roll, and that was counterterrorism, uh, hostage rescue. Um, marine counterterrorism, diving and everything like that. So once you've done your cycle and your, your selection and your cycle, that's almost a year. Then you'll go into your squadron and let's say your squadron's doing one year of green roll. So that's another year. Then you'll then change over to black roll. So really, you're not, you're not really past the selection until you've done three years. What are they looking for? Your strengths and your weaknesses? Determination, teamwork. Um, it's not about, you know, you may hear stories about, oh, an SES guy can... You know, because there's such individuals and all that. Yeah, sure, but we work as we work as a team. It's the best way you're going to get your results. Um, never, never knowing when to quit. Always getting up, uh, finding if, if solution A doesn't work, then you find solution B. Um, uh, just sort of, you know, going beyond what you think you're capable of going beyond, and that's all in your head. It's not your body. It's, it's see your head. that feeling there. See what you say about never quitting. Is that something you're born with, or can you be conditioned to think that way? I like to think, I, now I think you're born with it. I think you're born with it. You know, some guys perhaps could be conditioned with it. You know, you knock them down, they'll get up again, then you knock them down. But it's, I think the guy who, who gets knocked down and he just keeps getting up and he, he uses the, the anger of him getting up to keep him going forward, it's, it's, that's, got, that's got to be burning him already, I think. Because mm -hmm. I've interviewed a lot of SCS, SBS, and just built different. Some of them, are, they're just they're, there's something not quite right here. There's, oh, there's no. something missing. Yes, you know. So, but what do you think the main ingredient is to then pass SCS selection? Determination. Yeah, you, you got to have a mantra as well. You've got to have a reason for wanting to do it. My mantra was, you know, what sounds better to my sisters and my brother tried for the SAS selection, and my brother is in the SAS. And to me, I just kept saying it over and over in my head. Mm -hmm. And it always came down to me. My sisters will think, what sounds better is my brother is in the SAS. And also, you got to live with yourself. You know, you don't try it to fail it. You try it to pass it. And if you didn't pass it, like I did my very first selection in Singapore. I, I tried twice and I failed. And even though I wasn't really that sort of serious about it because um, I just gave it a go, I did start getting this feeling, well, well, you know, I failed. So I failed myself. And I know I can do better than this. So when I did it again in New Zealand, it was solely with the with the intention of, of passing. What made you push through the second time? What was the difference? Uh, you only get you only get two ch two chances to try. Um, sometimes you get three, but very very often, you know. Um, the trying it in in Singapore, you, we did it all in Malaysia, and that was through jungle training. Now, as much as I enjoyed my, my time in Singapore, I was in the infantry battalion. Infantry battalion back then, this is, you know, you got to remember the day before GPSs. Um, we weren't taught to navigate anywhere near as precisely as you are as in the SAS. So you get, a, you get an infantry soldier who follows, you give him a map and a compass, and you say, now off you go, yeah, we're going to get lost. And, and we always, always did because we weren't trained to, to navigate in such close environments and in the jungle. We just sort of followed. Um, when you go to New Zealand, it's more open country. It's uh, different varieties. Uh, you're, you're, you know what's more expected of you because failing the first one is actually good practice for the second one. So you brush up on your navigation. You become more skilled at it. So you, you're not going in totally blind like I did for my very first one. What's the worst thing about SES selection? Failing. That can be, that's the worst thing. And, uh, and I've met lots of guys... Have always given the old, oh yeah, I would have, I would have passed if it wasn't for my my knee, or for this or for that. At the end of the day, you failed, you know, and you've got to live with that. 